Welcome to MX Graph Made Simple Part 4. Today we're going to be discussing layouts. Here you have a list of about 10 different layouts. Uh, the typical one might be hierarchical, but you have many different types of layouts, each with their advantages and each with their own possible configurations. Okay, for dummies, uh, and I have to say myself included, when I first started reading about MX graph layouts and learning about them, of course I imagined that a circle is a circle. So I thought that if I would implement the circle layout, I'd have a nice pretty circle and everything would look beautiful and that would be the end of it. But a circle is not a circle as we'll find out soon. And a tree is definitely not a tree. And finally, in case you're the Birkenstock crunchy granola type, organic does not mean organic either. Each one of these concepts, circle, tree, organic, as well as other concepts, are very specific to graph theory. And to really get a handle on what each one of them means, it's very important that you understand more about graph theory. Now, I'm not going to describe this in detail for two reasons. Number one, I'm no expert in graph theory. Number two, there are already many excellent videos available giving a basic understanding of each one of these concepts. However, I will touch upon each concept as we move along. Okay, the first type of graph layout we're going to look at is a very typical layout. If you'll notice, there's exactly one path to go from any node to the next. Also, the connections are and that's why we would describe this as showing flow. You would start perhaps from the very top and then you can go in one direction or the other and as you go from one direction to the next you have choices as you move forward and it seems to be in this particular tree and in most hierarchical layouts that there is only one direction to move. And that's why we say typically the edges go in the same direction. If you look at each one of these edges, there's an arrow pointing in one direction because that is the way that it must move. A hierarchical layout could be used for many things. One example is the one we have pictured here, but it might also be, for example, an organizational chart. The next is the MX circle layout. Now again, I was picturing, picturing that everything would be in perfect, beautiful circles. Perhaps if you look at this image, like the blue circle at the bottom. So while all of them do really have a circular aspect to them, uh, the definition here of a circle is very specific to graph theory, and it pays to look up um, what a circle means. But suffice it to say that basically you can place these items within a circle. Now some vertices may or may not be connected to the rest of the vertices, uh, but they may wind up finding themselves outside of one of the circles where things are connected. And finally, it's important to note that in the circle layout, it will typically show one connection. So where you might have, as we'll learn a little bit later, parallel connections, um, oftentimes those parallel connections will not be shown. A circle layout would be excellent for showing relationships between things that are either not hierarchical or things that have a lot of variation. Now here we have an example of a compact tree layout. A compact tree layout is based on the compact tree algorithm, but the basic idea here is that a tree layout can be demonstrated in many different ways. A compact tree layout is an attempt to find the most compact way to lay out this tree. As we see in the second point, a compact tree layout is really only suitable for graphs that have no cycles. A cycle would be if you follow a graph to a specific point and then you can continue along the graph 
and somehow come back to that same point, that would be called a cycle or a circuit. In a tree, that never exists. That means to say that by following the graph, you can reach any given vertex only once. It's important to know that in the compact tree layout, any vertex which is not connected to another vertex in the tree is going to be ignored. The next one is a fast organic layout. And no, you can't find that in Whole Foods. The basic concept behind it, and again, not being an expert, I can't describe this in detail, but the basic concept behind it is that there is something called a force-directed layout paradigm. And the idea is, is that every single node is going to try to be as far away from the next node as possible. Now obviously if there's another node following that, the second, the middle node is going to be exactly between the first and the third node. If you'll notice in the graph that we have pictured right here on the right, where you have more interconnectedness, you're going to have more of a density in the graph. Once again, a vertex which is not connected to another is going to be ignored by this layout. The next is the MX Edge label layout. In this, we're able to specify exactly how and where the label of each edge is meant to be laid out. Up until now, we've primarily been showing images where there's only one way to get from one vertex to the next. That means to say that between vertices, there is only a single edge. However, you will oftentimes find graphs that have multiple edges between the vertices. And the parallel edge layout gives you options of how to deal with these scenarios. Now we move on to the partition layout, in which the partition layout, you basically fill the entire parent area with all of the child cells. The example I've shown you here is where it's filled vertically, but it can also be flipped on its side and be filled horizontally. Now we have the stack layout, and in a stack, we can have either a vertical or horizontal stack of all of the vertices. And finally, we have the composite layout, which I haven't really played with much and I don't understand, but the basic concept is if you want to combine many layouts together, you're able to use the composite layout.